have I learned anything from buying luxury? Hmm, that's a very good question. Something I wonder myself sometimes, have I actually learned anything or what? Or am I keep making the same mistakes over and over again? So in this video, let's see what I have learned from buying luxury over the years. Welcome back to my channel, you guys. I'm Hannah and this is So Much To Sign With Hannah. Thank you to all my current subscribers. I'm so eternally grateful for each and every one of you and all of your wonderful kind support. It means the world, it really does. I am trying to grow my channel. So if you're watching this video and you're hesitating to hit that little subscribe button, well, nothing ventured, nothing gained. <laughs> so I was tagged by the lovely Connor from The Closet by Connor. If you haven't checked out his channel, of course, do that. Um, once you've watched my video, of course, because he has got another version of this tag video and some thoughts on the subject. This tag has also been covered by several of my YouTube friends. So I will, of course, also link them in the description box. Make sure you check out their videos. They've got some really great insights that we can all learn from. So yeah, check them out. Let's see whether I can add anything to what other YouTubers have said. There might be some of the same points, obviously, because I guess we we all share some of the same experiences. So my first point really is buyer beware. And what do I mean by that? Well, I think we can all get, I don't know, swept away by all of the trends, all of the new releases that come out again and again and again. And I know personally, also because I do a lot of luxury shopping blogs, that's what my channel predominantly is about, that when I go out and film, look at all of the wonderful things that have hit the stores, I absolutely get swept away. One thing after the next goes on my wish list and I really have to hold back and not get swept away in the moment. So I think there are a couple of areas where I would say be careful or at least consider your purchase before you part with your hard earned cash. One area I would say is buying online can be, well, maybe not dangerous. You may need to consider not buying things that kind of take away from that dream purchase. And some of the dangers there, certainly for me, is a lot of scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. I do it all the time, you guys. It's what I do. <laughs> I love scrolling. I love going from one website to the next. I love looking at all of the best offers, the best sales, the latest releases. Yeah, a lot of scrolling, definitely. And sometimes I put many things into my shopping cart. So one of the things that I tend to do because I've learned my lessons is put it in the shopping cart, but don't check it out. And if it's still in your shopping cart, the next day, I might even leave it for a couple of days. And if I haven't really thought about, I must have that, or I will definitely need that in my life, <laughs> in my collection, sometimes it just remains in that shopping cart and I don't buy it. So my first lesson really is to make sure that you consider your purchase and make sure it's right for you. There are so many temptations, you guys. The sales online can be fantastic. Case in point, I have been looking at um, the Ferragamo Wonder Bag for a while now, and I really would love one of those. 
I just can't decide on the color and they do come up in the sales. So I looked at the sales, I put one or two of those bags in the shopping cart several times, but I have not purchased it yet. And sometimes that just tells me that maybe it is not actually the next thing that I really, really want. Yeah, so consider whether you think it's a good idea to buy it online. I would recommend that, especially if it is an expensive purchase that you go into store, try it on. You know, don't be worried about what the sales associates think or what others might think. Go and try it. Sometimes you need to go and try it more than once even. You know, a beautiful handbag, nine out of 10 times you want to A, feel the quality, you want to see it in real life, because as we know, if we consume luxury YouTube, quality isn't always there. So certainly when I buy handbags, I prefer to buy them in store especially if it's an expensive one or one that I consider expensive. I want to have the luxury experience, but I do also want to see what I'm buying. And if I buy it online, it will just come through the door. And when I've done that, sometimes I get surprised by the lack of quality of what it actually looks like in real life or even what it looks like on me. And I have got, I think I've only got one bag actually, um, that I have never ever used because I bought it online and it just wasn't what I thought it would be. So yeah, I would say be aware, try it on and don't get swayed <laughs> by all of the scrolling, all of the sales, unless it is something that you have really wants it for a while, then of course it makes sense to get a bargain. My next point is check out whether it's right for you. And by that I mean most of us have got preferences. When it comes to handbags, my preference for instance are crossbody bags. It definitely is. There's no doubt that the handbags I use the most and that I are kind of lean towards most of the time are crossbody bags because I love not having anything in my hands, right? When I go around, especially also if I'm doing um, shopping vlogs, I need to be able to carry my camera and Trying to maneuver with a handbag that isn't crossbody when you're filming is just hard. But also at other times, it's just easier most of the time I find. So crossbody bags are definitely my preferred style. Second to that are tote bags. I love tote bags. So if you are moving away from a shape that you wouldn't normally be drawn to, but you really love the bag, I suggest that you check it out properly. So an example of this is that I have had a bit of a problem with top handle bags, but I am really in love with the peekaboo. And I do think it is probably my top bag on my wish list right now is to get money saved to get a peekaboo in the interlaced, either in the medium size or in one of the smaller sizes. I don't know yet. And also I don't know which color. I think the influence on my husband actually is swaying me towards top handles because he loves them. He absolutely loves them. Um, so what I've done is to kind of get me on the journey is I purchased one of these from Aspinall of London lovely Mayfair bag. I unboxed this on my channel and I will link it below so you can check out what I had to say about this bag. But this is changing my view of top handle bags. And it's making me a little bit more kind of, yeah, comfortable 
in making the choice to spend a large amount of money because the peekaboos are, in my personal view, they are expensive, you guys. So to get me on that journey, I decided to go for this kind of medium range, I guess, designer, kind of a luxury handbag, but not top luxury. And that is my recommendation. This is my lesson. And I thought I'd share with you guys. Sometimes it's worth trying out a shape which you wouldn't ordinarily pick. Try it out by going for something that is less expensive. Um, some people will say, well, then you're taking money away from getting to that point of your dream item. And yes, it's true. But I also think that you don't want to be going spending five, six thousand pounds, whatever these bags cost, and then just really regret it. Yes, you can sell them, um, but nine out of ten times you're not going to get the money back. So for me personally, that is my lesson. I try a lesser value item to kind of road test whether I'm really committed to that style of bag. My third lesson, and this is one I think many YouTubers talk about, is the fear of missing out. Yes, there is a lot of fear of missing out because there are new things dropping all of the time. A personal example of me fearing missing out, <laughs> uh, we all do it, uh, was this little item which I purchased from the Louis Vuitton and Kusama collab. I absolutely loved that collaboration and I was determined that I wanted something. I knew that I didn't want to spend the top, top money on a handbag. The fashion, not really me. So what do you do? You buy a little small leather good to kind of satisfy your appetite, if we like. And it's a beautiful item. I absolutely love it. I still do. I still love this little purse, this little card holder, SLG from the Louis Vuitton Kusama collab. But have I used it? No. Will I use it? Hmm. Maybe, but not very often. Because I already have favourites in terms of SLGs. My favourite actually is another Louis Vuitton um, little card holder. <laughs> I've shown it in my SLG collection video, I think, a while back, which I might need to update, um, but I will link it in case you haven't seen it. So yes, there is a, another Louis Vuitton uh, card holder in my little collection that I prefer to use. And I just don't reach for this one, you guys. I absolutely don't. Have I regretted buying it? Um, no, I haven't. I'm really happy to have something from the collection, uh, from this particular collection, which was, uh, yeah, it was last year. But I would say, be careful not to get swayed. The next lesson really is one I think we all make, not only in luxury, but in life in general. And it is, don't worry about what other people think. And to add to that, don't be intimidated by what other people think. And by that, I mean what luxury shop assistants might be thinking about you not buying something when you're trying things out. It's perfectly fine. You can try as much as you like. I think Deb also made this point in her video um, version of this tag. And I think it's so true. You go into a luxury store and 
it can feel intimidating and you might worry about what they're thinking about. Uh, is she going to buy anything? Is she just going to try everything on and not buy anything? What if I don't buy anything? What will they think of me? You know, if I'm coming back again and I want to try it again and I've still not purchased anything, what will they think? Frankly, it does not matter. It's your money. It's your decision. However long it takes you to make the decision is fine. It really is. And actually, they want you to come in and try these things because that's how they are going to ultimately get that sale. Why not be the master of your own decisions and stop worrying about what everybody else thinks? There's so much judgment out there, especially around luxury. If you wear luxury, oh, how much did that cost? Ooh, how can you afford that? Ooh, shouldn't you be spending your money on something else that's more sensible? Or why on earth would you spend that amount of money on a handbag, piece of jewellery or whatever it might be? Honestly, you guys, it is something I'm sure we have all battled with if we purchase luxury or it's something that might be more expensive than what other people in your friendship group buy or whatever. Don't worry about it. It's your decision. You earn the cash, you can decide how to spend it. Of course, we all need to be responsible. We all need to make sure that we can, you know, pay for our day to day things before we we buy luxury items because yes, no, they're not essential. And yeah, and I'm sure <laughs> most of us have to be a little bit sensible, right? But it doesn't mean that you can't buy luxury and be happy about it. Enjoy it. One of my biggest luxury purchases that I have ever made was my wedding dress. And to this day, yeah, my husband still doesn't know how much I paid for my wedding dress. So, yeah, am I fearing the judgment that he would have? No, not really, because he doesn't judge. But I've not told anybody else either. And why? Because I feared being judged, I guess. Um, I decided that I wanted the best wedding dress that I could afford at the time. So I went the expensive route. I went to a, what is quite a famous uh, wedding dress designer here in the UK called Sassy Holford. And um, she has a couture kind of wedding bridal dress shop <laughs> in Fulham here in London. And I went the whole way, the whole way you guys. I got a custom made wedding dress to fit me perfectly in exactly the pattern the colours and the materials that I wanted. And it was very expensive. Yes, for me, it was massively expensive. And for most people, they would be going, why on earth would you pay that amount of money for a wedding dress that you're going to wear one day? You know, guys, it was perfect for me. And I don't regret a single penny or what I paid for that dress still to this day. So the point is, whatever you decide to spend your money on is your decision at the end of the day. And you should enjoy every single luxury purchase you make. If you don't enjoy it, what's the point though? So I would say, obviously, get things that you know you're going to enjoy all the time. And I think the last point on this really is be you. Some people like black handbags. Some people like pink. Some people like luxury earrings. <laughs> um, some people like scarves. Some people like diamonds. 
whatever it is that you love, whatever colors you prefer, whatever style you prefer. You know, if you want to be dressed head to toe in pink, red, yellow, green, do it. Be yourself. Not everybody's going to agree with your choices and it frankly doesn't matter. Just be you and be happy about that. Because you are unique, you're beautiful and we all deserve the very best that we think we absolutely love, that make your heart flutter, that make you smile. <laughs> so if you love it, go for it. And don't worry what other people say. It's like friends will say to me, oh, didn't you have that handbag in blue the last time? Isn't it the same one? Yes, it's the same one. Yes, you are quite right. I wore one in blue <laughs> or I wore one in green. And yes, it's the same style of handbag, but no, it's not the same. Mm -mm. No, 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 it's not the same. You can buy the same handbag again and again if you love it. The same shape. I've got several, well, I've got two mini baguettes. Uh, this is my latest one, which I also unboxed here on my channel. I got this in the summer. And yeah, the mini baguette and the baguette in general is probably my favorite. I'm a Fenty fan, as you know. And do I want another mini baguette? Yes, I absolutely do. I've got my eyes on one at the moment that mm, I might get swayed by. But others may not understand. They will judge you. Maybe they will judge you. But who cares, right? Because I love the baguette. And if I need five, ten of these <laughs> in my life, because it makes me happy, so be it. So, yes, don't let other people sway your decision because they wouldn't buy two or three or four or five of these. Do you. Be you and be proud of it. Now, when I make my luxury purchases, I do try to consider whether I'm going to wear something for more than one kind of occasion so yeah am i only going to wear a bag as an evening bag for instance then i probably now won't buy that bag because it's a lesson that i've learned that if i do that then it's just going to end up sitting on my shelf or in a box or in a dust bag and never see the light of day and frankly I can't afford not to use my things. I'm not rich, as I've said. So I don't want to feel that I'm wasting my money. I want to feel that I get the most out of them, right, you guys? So an example of where I didn't listen to my own advice, and obviously one of the reasons why I've learned this lesson, is this little bag. Yes, so this is a Dior. It's a wallet on chain. Uh, it's got the lovely little charm here and it's kind of a champagne gold hardware. And you guys, I love this. It's black. <laughs> it's sensible. It can be used for absolutely everything. Do I wear it? Not very often because my lifestyle has changed. I don't go to many parties anymore. I rarely go out, you guys, to exciting evening places or parties or, yeah. I, it's not very often that I need a specific handbag for the evening. So why would I spend my money 
on an evening bag if I know that it just doesn't fit my lifestyle anymore. I think I've probably used this, I don't know, handful of times? Well, maximum 10 times. Yeah, no, I haven't used it 10 times, definitely not. Um, and this is not cheap. Well, in my world, this is not cheap. And I love this bag. I love Dior and I love this beauty. And you can see it's in beautiful condition still. I've had this for years. This is not a new bag. It looks pretty new, right? <laughs> and it's because I've not used it that much. So one of the really important lessons that I've learned is that I need to pick my purchases according to also how much am I going to use that. If I'm only if I know that, oh, it's beautiful, but it's going to be sitting on my shelf because I don't have the occasion to wear it. Yeah, I think it's pointless. Then. And on that point of don't be judged by other people. Also, don't listen to if they say, don't buy that. Oh, that's such a waste of money. Why buy that? For me, a good example of that really is custom jewellery. A lot of people online say it's pointless. You know, it's not real. It's not uh, precious. It's going to lose its value. Seen. Or if you haven't, go and watch that video afterwards. My unboxing of my latest purchases from Fendi and the Fendi Pokemon collaboration, where I purchased a lovely new pair of earrings. And I absolutely love them, you guys. Yes. No, they're not worth the money. Definitely not. But they're worth it to me because they make me happy. They make me smile. I enjoy wearing them. Custom jewellery for me is not about the value of the metal or whether it's got gemstones or not because it is just, for me, it's a beautiful design. I love it and therefore it's worth the price. So yeah, people will say it's not worth it, but if it's worth it to you, then don't, don't worry Last about it. lesson really. And this comes from being a person who is not in her 20s anymore, as I'm sure you can see. Uh, yeah, I'm in the middle of my life. Uh, therefore, I have obviously learned a lot over the years. Also with what I like to buy and what I like not to buy. So for me, I love buying luxury accessories. That is handbags, shoes, earrings scarves um that kind of thing i don't tend to buy luxury ready to wear well there are several reasons for that the price is one the other is that most of the luxury houses don't tend to cater for my size in clothing um but also my size fluctuates and i'm happy with that fine with it in fact um I accept who I am and that also comes from being a woman in the middle of her life. So you learn to accept yourself for who you are, whereas when I was younger that was much harder. So one of the things I would say in addition to that, never say never because as you move through life not only to do with luxury, things change. You change in the way that you are, in terms of what you prioritize in life, the things that seems important to you, but when it comes to luxury, design, fashion even, your taste changes, right? But also, as you grow older, your body shape changes. It's a fact. It is a fact. Well, for men and women alike, body shape changes as we get older. Um, so therefore, you need to cater for your body shape in a different way. To feel happy, 
to feel comfortable with yourself and so on. So therefore, I would say biggest lesson is don't think that what you love today is what you're going to love in five years time. I absolutely didn't like the peekaboo. I absolutely hated the peekaboo bag from Fendi. You know I'm a Fendi fan. Absolutely love Fendi. It's my favourite brand. But I just couldn't get on board with the peekaboo. It has taken me years. It has taken me a long time to love that bag. And what did I do? I started out by trying out a smaller version of the peekaboo. This one here. So this is a peekaboo, I think it's called East West. It is a um, pouch. Yeah, I think they call it a pouch probably. But really it is a very, very similar size to one of the the small peekaboos uh, this of course doesn't have the top handle it's got a chain instead so this started me on the journey of starting to love the peekaboo essentially and i love this little 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 gem but no i absolutely didn't like the peekaboo i thought it was too ladylike yeah okay <laughs> But I did. I thought it was a little bit boring. Um, it didn't do anything for me. The baguette has always had my heart, not the peekaboo. But something started to change. And it changed when they started to introduce little quirks, new textures. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier in this <laughs> video, it is probably... I think it is the top bag on my wish list, the Peekaboo Interlace. So things will change, you guys. You will change your opinion about things and it's absolutely fine and it's natural. So even if you said, oh, no, that's not for me. Oh, no, I don't like that. <laughs> I will never get that. I will never do that. I will never buy that. I say, never say never again, because you are bound to change your mind for whatever reason it is, not only to do with luxury, but other things in life. You're bound to change your mind. And that is absolutely fine. As in life, luxury is not much different. Enjoy it. Be frivolous. Do you. Don't put up with any judgment. Just enjoy it, you guys. Be fabulous. Be you. Be wonderful. You're magnificent. We all have wonderful, wonderful things to contribute. Our personal style is our style. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. So let me know in the comments below, what lessons have you learned? Are there anything that you want to share? I would absolutely love to hear in the comments below. And of course, to any YouTubers out there, even if I haven't tagged you, and if you're watching this video and you feel like doing this tag, I would absolutely enjoy watching your take on this. Tag. Those were my top lessons learned. Uh, what I have learned from buying luxury over the years. There are obviously many more things that I could say, but yeah. Go and watch some of my YouTube friends and their take on this tag. Because collectively, there is a huge amount of experience here of luxury YouTubers who have made many, many, many lessons through their purchases. So check their channels out. So all there is to say really is thank you so much for watching. And of course, if you loved this little video, give it that thumbs up love and hit that little subscribe button if you enjoyed the video too and my channel. 
thank you so much everybody and i hope to see you in my next video have an absolutely most fabulous day wherever you are in the world.